Hello everyone, my name is Nick and I'm an engineer and I have something to show you. So basically what was happening was I was browsing through the scenarios section to see if they first to see if they changed any of the old ones any of the old scenarios so they could have content from the newer update and then check out the two newer scenarios. But then I know something in Station 1, which just in case you want to know, it, I looked it up. It is not a new thing. It's been in here since forever. So I'm going to press Start and show you. So now it's loading the scenario. So now past players of the game would be able to recognize this as the... Station 1 scenario, which basically you have the space station, you can really mess around with it. It sits at a 126, 139 orbit. And by that I mean it's a height, apple is 139 kilometers, and its periapsis is 126 kilometers. Anyway, it's a space station, it's the spaceship. The station's made out of one, two, three, four, five modules. Six modules. And it has a space plane docked to it. So basically, you can mess around with it. You can launch something up to here, here to dock with it. But that's not what we're going to talk about. You see, if we go to map mode, and if we zoom out, zoom out you'll see that there's a little ship orbiting Duma, Duna called Kerbal XX which I'm going to switch to Kerbal XX it's a low small rocket that's it has about half its full drain that's composed of ma that's main components are a Mark 1 2 command pod, a Rocket Max decoupler, a Rocket Max X216 fuel tank, ink, and a LVN atomic rocket motor. Or which basically if you don't know what this is, it's a it has low thrust, very low thrust, although it is very fuel efficient. So yeah. And it's just randomly orbiting Duna. Maybe they put it in here just to see if anyone will find her, or maybe the reasoning would be that this docked to the station, to Station 1, because they stated that Station 1 is a refueling station in the scenario description, so maybe it stopped there and then blasts off to Duna. Now, this would be the end, but I want to do something else, okay? Hold on for it. Okay, I'm back. I've now received a quarter or, it, or a United States 25 cents piece. So basically, if it's heads, I'm landing on Duna. If it's tails, I'm going to try to get this thing back to Kerbin, okay? So, okay, so flipping. Okay, I'm going to attempt to bring this back to Kerbin. Wish me luck for that, you'll be coming back. We'll meet again to see the results. Okay, so now I've put myself on a on a escape trajectory from Duna uh, and putting myself in orbit around Kerbal, which is the star for this series of planets. It's, and right now I'm trying to time accelerate out of Duna. Okay. Now I've time sorry out of Duna. We're gonna try I'm gonna try and position myself with Kerbin. So yeah, see you back when I have either I run out of fuel or I've positioned myself with Kerbin. As you can see, I've now put myself on an encounter with Kerbin. 
And now I shall see if I can get this home. So let's time accelerate to infinity and infinity. That's how it went, right? I'll say it, that it went like that. <coughs> okay. Should I arrow break? Nah, I don't think arrow breaking would do me any justice. And wait, we'll be passing by Duna. I wonder. No, wait. Okay, so if it cripples that, cripples that way. It should head be towards the right a little bit. Yeah, I don't think you can see it. We're just a lone object in space. Next to a star. God. You know when you're right by Kerbin and you're like, wow, this is so fast? And then you go into interplanetary space and you're like, Come on! Go faster! Please! For me! Please! How long have they been in this mission? Uh, over two years? Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I'm tipped oh yeah, it sometimes does that. You know what? Because I'm feeling bad for them, I will let them... One, get out. Barbless will get out. Stretch his arms, arms and legs. Okay, that's enough stretching. Barbless went out. Gemini will go out. Stretch his arms, arms and legs. I'm sorry, my steam popped up for a second. And Ribley go out. That's all you get. Back in interplanetary space. That way we can see station one. I bet if we zoom in there, it's like just spinning endlessly. It's just like, bah! It's probably like, kill me now! Why does he keep doing that? By the way, we're approaching. So I shall time accelerate slower. So now, I'll try to see if I can perform a perigrade burn. And see if that will give me. Oh! God. Let's be one hell of a narrow break. Coming home from Duna. 20. 4 minutes, 28 seconds. Okay, so let me pull up my calculator real quick. So they'll be coming in at 4 minutes, 28 seconds. 4 times 60 is 240. Add 28 seconds to this. Divide by 2, divide by 60, and we have 2 minutes, and we'll start at 2.30. We'll start at 2.30. Okay, we shall start at 2.30. In one day. 5 hours, 4 hours, 3, 2, 1. Okay, 29, I missed, I messed up, I messed up. Go with it anyway, go with it anyway. YOLO this. This shall be YOLO'd. Physical time acceleration, go! Basically, it allows me to time accelerate while burning. You just can't go nearly as fast as if you're not burning, but it's faster. Especially if you're working something like the nuclear engine. 
And we're actually starting to run lower on fuel. Right now I'm just hoping we're able to get myself in a way to put myself in some, at least an arrow breaking position. I'm actually adding RCS into this. If all things fail, we have RCS. And we're out of that, so now we're left to rely on the RCS fuel. So yeah, here's to hoping that our RCS will burn through this. No, that isn't right. Here's to hoping our RCS puts us in a position of getting us to Kerbin. Eh, four minutes, that's alright. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven. Okay. Time to get it. Time to put ourselves into the orbit, into Kerbin. That's not what she said. Where is the Kerbins? Oh, is that the Mun meaning the Kerbins right below us? Oh, we're gonna play out. We're doing a polar reentry. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be awesome. Okay, okay. Just gotta align ourselves. Mm. Alright, self so entry. Three, two, one, decap. Decoupled, and now we're free roaming. We're gonna land on the southern or northern polar cap. We're gonna land, probably, on the northern polar cap. Oh yeah, our parachute's making our center of mass go off because whoever designed this only put one radially mounted parachute on this. Which is throwing off our center of mass, which is causing this weird thing. Thank goodness I don't have the deadly reentry mod installed or else everyone would be dead by now. Oh look, there's the solar panels. Anyway, coming in. I have about two minutes left to finish this. And the camera's rotating, because we're actually right above the pole. What's our terms of landing? I'm hoping we land. We are able to land on the polar cap. <coughs> yeah, the camera's still rotating. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're landing on the ice cap. Just gonna time accelerate through this. Gonna actually have a camera pointed towards the terrain. Parachute deployed. And now we play the waiting game as I have about one minute to wrap this up. Okay, we see the polar mountains and the mountains and the valleys and parachute work. Please, work, please, work. Okay. Everything's working perfectly fine. <laughs> anyway, and touchdown three, two, one, mark. Okay, so we landed on Kerbin successfully. Okay, so that has been Kerbal XX, the secret ship in the Station 1 scenario. My name's, been, my name's Nick, and I'm an engineer, signing off.